Hi there, this is George Vlad. Welcome to another edition of Fieldwork and Bushcraft. Today I'll talk to you about mini drop rigs. These small bags that you see here are drop rigs. I leave them out in the field for 20, 24, 50 hours at a time, even more, so I can capture nature, wildlife, environments as they are without me affecting them, so without being there. There's a whole discussion around leaving your rig out while you're recording. Some people frown upon it, some people are really fine with it. I'm part of the latter, I really enjoy it. Partly because I'm really lazy, so I don't want to be there for 24 hours to do recording. And also because whenever humans are in a certain environment, they affect it unknowingly. As you might expect, size is really important. So the, the smaller the rigs you leave out, the better. Ideally, they won't be found by wildlife or people, because otherwise you, may, you risk losing them. I find it useful to use these waterproof dry bags. So let's see, let's start with this one. So what makes a good drop rig? Well, you have to protect it from the elements, right? So this is really important. This is a very small dry bag. I don't remember the make, the model. It's just something I got off. Amazon, but there's a few good brands around. There's AquaQuest. Thank you. So this is AquaQuest. I don't. I think they make smaller sizes as well. This is for my big rig. But yeah, this works as well. I've had this for a couple of years and still working. And this will keep your recorder safe from humidity, heat, dust, smoke, whatever. I would never leave my rig out without one of these. Then you will need a recorder. Obviously, right? One of the best recorders that I've ever tried is the Sony PCMD100. As you're probably well aware, I love this little fellow. It's really good for a number of reasons. I did a review, a written review of it. I will do a video review in the future. But yeah, it goes for about 20 hours, 22 hours at a time on four double A's. And yeah, preamp quality is good. It sounds good. It goes up about to about 70 kilohertz in frequency. And yeah, it's, it's a really good recorder overall. I use it with the onboard mics as well occasionally, but for drop rig purposes, I use external microphones. So we have the recorder. And then, as I said, I use external microphones. My favorite, my absolute favorite for this purpose are LOM Micro Uzi. These I got for less than 100 euros. They're really small. Look at that, they're incredibly small. They're really low self noise. They go up in frequency to about 70 or 80 kilohertz. They, they're good with transients. They're good with very soft sound sources. They're overall a great package. I have maybe about six, seven pairs of these. I'll probably buy more. So we got a recorder, mics, bag. I do use these wind bubbles made by Bubble Bee. You can get them from LOM with your mics when you purchase them. And you can also get them from your sound equipment retailer. They're brilliant. They work really well against wind. They protect against humidity to a certain extent. Not 100%, but they're still good. And I wouldn't leave my rig out without these. You know, the microphones are really sensitive, so any breeze will overload them. I keep the mics and the wind bubbles in this nifty Tupperware container made by Sistema. It's more or less the right size. I also have some clips in here. And 
really important silica gel packets because my microphones will be wet for a whole lot of the, their lifetime. So when I put them in here, I sometimes forget about them and having silica gel in there will help reduce issues with humidity. And also, lastly, electrical tape. This is really useful for taping the microphones to branches, to whatever, anything basically. People, wildlife, I'm kidding, I won't tape the microphones to wildlife. But yeah, this is really useful and I have a roll of tape in each of these bags. And so I put everything together and I keep everything ready. Recorder battery is always charged. So when I find an interesting location, everything's ready. Just drop my rig. It only takes me 10 minutes at most before this is up and running. And I'm recording. And I get really good recordings with this, these very small packages. This is not surround recording the way I do with my main rig, but it's stereo, it's perfectly usable. It's great for listening, great for sound design, great for any purpose you might think of. And it's a really nifty small pack, right? Um, I also use the, that is a D10. So yeah, the Sony D10 goes for about 51 hours on four AA batteries. It's great when I know I won't go back to a location in more than one day, two or three days at a time. So I will leave this sometimes in the field. I left it in, uh, in Ethiopia in the cloud forest a few weeks ago. Got really good recordings. And I also have uh, the A10, which I'm actually re recording myself with at the moment. So the Sony PCM A10. This one, here we are, this is it. This one only records for about 13 hours at a time with the onboard batteries. But I can work with it as long as there are no limitations. I will leave it in the field for short periods of time, up to 13 hours, as I said. And the quality, the preamp quality over these three bits of equipment is more or less similar. I'm happy with them. A few considerations about leaving equipment out for long periods of time, more than half an hour, an hour, while you're not there. Of course, there's always the risk of people stumbling into your equipment and either tampering with it or downright stealing it. That's something that I'm aware of. I will try to mitigate that risk as much as possible. But yeah, it's, you never know. And there's also the risk of wildlife finding it and either <clears throat> breaking it or finding it interesting and trying to take it away. These two things, you know, wildlife and people, these two aspects, you can sort of mitigate to a certain extent by hiding the rigs, by making them inconspicuous, by using uh, camouflage colors. At the end of the day, it's a risk I'm willing to take for good recordings. I've had elephants and bears and baboons come close to them, inspect them, look at them, make localizations close to them, which is good, of course. I've heard of worse things. Your mileage may vary with this. I lost a couple of microphones in the rainforest to rodents. Yeah, they find the, the cables irresistible, so they'll gnaw through them. I think they're more attracted to the lighter colored furry windshields. So if you can avoid using those, you can use black or dark colors. Yeah, if you only have one recorder, one, one pair of microphones, you might not want to leave it out without being there. As mentioned previously, there's also the consideration about humidity, heat, you know, or the effects of weather generally over your equipment. These microphones paired with the wind bubbles, they are not waterproof, but water resistant, I would say. I've had mine in rainforests and tropical storms. They were fine the day afterwards. I have a friend who lost a pair to humidity, to, to like a huge downpour. So yeah, again, your mileage may vary. I'm prepared to lose pairs, you know, as long as I get good recordings. 
but yeah, the microphones are exposed, you know, you can't put them in, in the dry bag because otherwise you don't get the good recordings. So whenever you do this, be aware of it. Yeah, also, it helps to know a little about your surroundings. So if you're in a place where people go out camping, for example, maybe it's not ideal. If there's people who forage around in the area you're in, you know, that means that people will go in, in the bush looking for, I don't know, for berries, for mushrooms, for caterpillars, for grubs. So that may not be ideal. There's more to talk about this and I'll touch upon this in a different video about unattended recording in general. But when you use these small rigs, I think that the likelihood of losing them for any reason, it's low if you, ha if you use common sense. This is one of my favorite ways to record. It takes the work out of being there when you're recording, but it puts it into finding a good location, making your rig inconspicuous, you know, hiding it really well, considering rain, wind, dust, whatever, floods, and yeah, getting good recordings, getting re the really good wildlife sounds that you don't get when you're there. So for that, I'm prepared to run all these risks. And I've got really good recordings by using this system. I hope you found this video interesting. Feel free to comment on the video, ask me for details and chime in if you have different opinions on this. And I'll see you in the next video.